Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp and welcome to another video on this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, where we're going to get hands on again and we're going to keep building and improving this plugin that we're building, the Parametric Camp Toolbox or however you want to call this. And in this exercise, we're going to focus specifically on creating a set of components that work with data. So in the previous videos, I have, I have taught you how to manipulate lists and data trees in Grasshopper. So we're going to see a few examples of those, like, for example, creating a component that spits out a bunch of information about the tree that we're working with or creating components that get the get get items from a list that remove items from a list with particular versions for the first element and the last element. Similarly, I'm going to teach you how to take a data tree and to flatten or to graph that data tree with C sharp scripting. You're going to see how easy it is. And last but not least, and this is probably one of the most interesting ones, I'm going to teach you how to, instead of getting particular items from a full data tree, I'm going to teach you how to grab full, um, full branches from a data tree. So for example, this branch here or this, or how to and how to do that from an index number and even cooler is going to be how to do this from a messed up string representation of the name of the path. Okay, these are all going to be exercises that I'm going to help you understand better how data trees and how lists are handled inside of Grasshopper and how to create them and how to manipulate them, how to change them. All right. With that, I think it's time to hands on. Oh, and I forgot. And we're also going to take the subdivide list, the subdivide surface component that we did in previous exercises that outputted a plain flat list of points. And we're going to modify that to output a tree structure of points, those points grouped in lists as the original component does. Because as I will say a lot of times in this video, we are now pro uh, we're now professional or advanced or however you want to call it. So we want to make things nice, clean, elegant. And um, so this is the way to go. All right. So let's talk in and more typing. Let's get hands on and let's do data tree creation and manipulation using C sharp scripting. All right, let's start with um, some simple stuff. So one of the most useful components here in the list data is list item. It's a component that takes a particular item from a list, right? So we're going to replicate that. We're going to create a C sharp script component that given any uh, list as indicated by L, right? And, and lowercase i in, that indicates the position then gets that item. So I'm going to say get item and then the item out is going to be I out is going to be that. All right. Now, as we said in the previous video, because I want this component to be generic, I want it to work with any input data that we can think of. I'm actually not going to type it and I'm going to leave the L input to be of the type generic object so that it can accept any kind of input. What I will do though, is I will right click here and make sure that it has list access because this component will be working only at the list level. So we, if we're given five lists of elements, we will always want to take the first one, the second one, whatever uh, index we are given. All right. So this is going to be list access for this. We don't need tree access. And then I am going to right click here and make sure that it's of the type integer because it's a position. All right. And then I'm going to plug in here the list. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to plug in a data, uh, a slider. And then the output is going to be super easy. Uh, the, it's going to be super easy. What we're going to do is we're going to click here and we're going to say this is the algorithm and these are the outputs. And what we can do here is we can say, well, what I want is from this list, I want to retrieve element in position number i. So that's going to be super simple. Object item is going to be equal to what the list that you're giving me, the element in position i. 
which is what I, I have here. And then I out is going to be equal to this item, correct? So if I now click execute, you can see that what I get is for this data tree of elements that is coming in, I get all the first points. Now I get all the second points, all the third points, fourth points, five points, etc. Until I go over five, at which point I get a an error that is that I don't have that many elements, so I just cannot give that to you. Okay, all right. So that sucks. What could we do about this? Well, there's a couple of things we could add more options, wrapping, etc. But I actually want to hold on to doing proper error handling and warning handling, which is something that uh, in Grasshopper is very nice. So I'm going to hold on on this and then on the next hands-on exercise, we're going to go back to this and implement nice error handling and more options to this component. Okay, so I'm going to leave that as it is right now. Obviously, this could have been shortcut to this, all right, and it will still work. It's the exact same thing. It's just that, you know, I don't like shortcutting things when I'm teaching. I like being a little more verbose. So I'm just going to leave it like that so that we understand that this item variable is of the generic type object. Just, just, just for us to know. Okay. Beautiful. So what about now writing a component that removes an item from that list? So I'm going to create a similar component and this is what I'm, I'm going to call it remove item and then the output here is going to be called L out. All right. And then what I would like to do now is I would like to rewrite this so that um, the algorithm is a list to take the list and to remove an element at the position I. The way we're going to do that is very simple. If we actually, um, if we, the way we're going to do that is very simple, which is that unfortunately, I'm not sure why, but for standard, uh, for standard lists in Grasshopper, the development environment, the one, this window here, cannot actually do autocomplete. I don't know why this is the case, but in any case, very soon I'm going to teach you a technique to write C Sharp script components using Visual Studio and then having access to the full capacities of Visual Studio. So for the time being, you can trust me on this one that lists in C Sharp have a method that is called remove at and that it takes one integer, which is the position where you want to remove that element. And the changes are done at the list that we invoke that method in, which means that we don't need to return a new list and spit it, blah, blah, blah. We just need to take, um, we just need to perform that removal and then spit out on the component, the same list without the item that was, that was removed. Okay. And if I do that, you can see that now I have this, and this, and if I were to actually showcase this, let me um, let me turn this visualization off. Let me turn this off. Let me turn this off. So you can see that now I am removing the correct element from the list. And also, if I go out of bounds, I get an error here. Okay, just like with the other component. All right, beautiful. So what is the next thing that we're going to do? Well, for me, it turns out that it's super, super useful. I end up doing all the time to get the first item and to get the last item. So, um, so can we just write like a couple of really quick components to do that? Let's just do that. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get first, and then I'm going to remove this element. And then what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to overwrite this to zero. Okay. And then we got a component that gets always the first element. And now here I can write a similar one that always gets the last element because I end up doing this all the time in vanilla grasshopper. So this is going to be, this index number is going to be whatever the length of the list is minus one. All right. And then, so that is going to be and you can see that here, the first one, the last one. Okay, this is working great. How about removing the first element and removing the last element? I always end up doing that a lot. And it, I have to combine three components in vanilla grasshopper. It's kind of t 
tedious. So I'm just going to, for remove item, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to remove first, and then I'm going to double click here and going to remove at position number zero. All right. And then remove last, which I am going to do is I am now going to double click here and remove the element that is at position L dot count minus one. Okay. And then with that, I'm going to remove the last one. And this one is unnecessary. And this one is also unnecessary. All right, beautiful. I think I'm just gonna place those in here just because it's, it's a little nicer, correct? All righty, so if that's the case, then I think we have a nice set of getting, removing, etc. So what is the next example that we're going to do? Next thing we're going to do is going to be also a super, super common operation at the data tree level, which is going to be flattening and grafting data trees. So for that, I'm just going to go full screen here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a C sharp script component. Okay. That is going to take the tree and it's going to take, and it's going to output the flat tree. All right. And I'm going to flatten here and I'm going to remember, I'm going to plug this in here. And I would like to remind all of us that um, the input for this one is also not going to be typed, or you could use system.object, that's also fine. It's not going to be typed so that this is as generic as possible. However, because I want to flatten a data tree, I need to make sure that the input is of the type tree axis. All right. So what that means is that the now I have this and then I can just write my algorithms and I can just write my outputs. And then what I'm going to do is in order to flatten the tree, I could do it manually, but it turns out that data trees already have a method that does it right away. So what I can do is T dot and I can look for flatten, which is somewhere here. And you can see that the flatten component, the flatten method, first of all, it returns nothing which gives me an indication that it's going to perform the flattening on the data tree that we are calling it. So I don't need to create a new data tree variable and store the result. No, I can just apply it to the tree that we have here. However, it's not going to be as simple as flattening and that's it. Because if I do this, I'm probably going to get an error, which is, oh no, it's not. So it turns out that I can just call it like this and flat is going to be equal to that tree that I just flattened. And it turns out that it works. All right. Well, uh, yeah, well, so that works. So that's great. I was thinking when I read, I was reading the description, I thought that it was going to ask me for a, for a path. And I thought that that was the only overload. So I thought I was going to need to give it like a new path of the kind, for example, uh, zero, so that the output was zero, or I needed to give it zero, one, two, three, or whatever, if I wanted to hard code, what is the path that I want for the output of that flattening, all right? But it looks like uh, this is redundant, and if I, this is redundant, which is what I want, and if I call the method with no data, it uses the zero path by default. So that's great, all right? So why not? And then I'm just going to now create a similar one, but instead of flatten, I'm going to call it graft. All right. And then here, I'm going to call it graft. And then I'm going to say T in this case, I want graft. And I wonder if there, I have to give it any kind of, so if I could give it paths, uh, and I guess it's going to use that path as the root, but the other overload is no path whatsoever. And just a Boolean flag telling it whether if I want to skip null items or not. So I may not want to skip the null items. So I'm just going to do false to keep the real structure. And then here, I'm going to say that the output graph needs to be that data tree that I just modified. And you can see that the result is that the 
the tree has been grafted and has now a structure with more branches for each one of the original ones, okay, with a new sub layer of branches. Beautiful. So let me put this graft and <clears throat> flatten all the way here in my list of data components that I'm building and prototyping for our next, for our plugin. Okay. Now, what is the next thing that we're going to implement? The next thing we're going to try is something very similar to getting the item or removing items. But in this case, what we're going to try is to get a full branch out of a data tree and to remove a full branch also out of a data tree, which um, as you will see very soon, there's two ways to do it, the easy way and the pro way of doing it. And as you may have guessed, we're going to learn the pro version of how to do that. Um, so bear with me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy a version of this real quick. And I'm going to start with, um, with getting branches by, I'm going to get a branch and I'm going to get a branch by the order of that branch. So the first one, the second one, or the third one. This is going to be the, an integer representing the order and this is going to be the tree. And then here, what I would like to get is the output as the branch, all right? And then I'm going to delete everything and I'm going to keep here the algorithm and I'm going to move things a little down here because it's kind of busy over there. And just to make sure to, that things are going well, I recommend this always. Let's take a look at a panel with the da original data and, and that we're working with. And let's take a look at another panel with the outputs that we're going to get here, okay? The first thing that I can notice is that without even writing any code, the component is running three times, one probably for each one of the branches in the original tree. But that means to me is a reminder that I have forgotten to change that the component works one time for each list. And what I want is for the component to work once for each one of the data trees. And data trees are always just one. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to change this to tree axis, all right, tree, tree axis. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to retrieve a branch, the branch, the, the second branch of the tree in this case, um, and output it here. So there's two ways to go about that. If you think about it with what we've seen before, the fastest way to do this could be to say B is going to be equal just simply to the, I'm not, oh, not, not an L, sorry. I'm going to rename this to tree because now this is a tree. This is just visual flavor for me. Um, so I'm taking a tree and I'm outputting a branch. So I'm going to take here, I'm going to say that the output B has to be equal to T dot, and then I can access the list of branches. And then from that list of branches, I can retrieve the branch that is at position I. So the first one, the second one, the third one. And if I do that, this is going to work and this works perfectly fine but it's not very clean in my opinion, because even though this branch here is indeed the second one, I can see it here. What has happened is that since I haven't really taken good care of this, Grasshopper has automatically renamed the list that I output it. Because remember, whenever I take a branch from a data tree, that branch is of the type list of whatever, and then Grasshopper automatically detects that that's a list and then does a little bit of magic to conform that list to the data tree structure. And that's why Grasshopper ass assigns an automatic data tree with this uh, path of zero zero. But if it, what we're doing is retrieving a branch from a tree, it feels like that branch that I'm extracting should have the exact same properties of the original one, which is to be one single branch with the original path name of that branch in the first place. So because we want to make, we want to be clean and nice and professional computational designers, let's try the more advanced way, which will also give us like a little bit of an insight of different ways to create data trees, because that is the problem. The problem is that on B, we are outputting an object, which is of the type list of blah, blah, blah. And that is so because branches, when you pick up an element from a branch, the return type is a list of objects. It's not a data tree anymore. 
What we need to do though is instead of that, what we need to do is on B, we need to spit out some kind of data tree that has the branch that we have selected with the correct path. Okay. So how can we do that? Well, I let's see T dot um, the, can we select a branch? We can select a branch from a data tree, but then we need to take, we need to get, um, sorry, we need to, we need to have a path, etc., etc. So I don't think this is going to work. And there are other methods here. Well, long story short, the nicest way of doing this is just creating a simple new data tree from scratch. Okay, that's going to be a clean data tree. I'm going to call it data tree, and then it's going to be of the type object. And then what we're going to do is that we're going to iterate over all the branches in the original, in the original, um, in the original tree. And then we're only going to retrieve the ones that are part of I. That was a really bad way of saying it. Let me say this again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the branch that is at position I. I'm going to extract the path that is at position I from this tree. And then I'm going to use that to add them to the new tree that is only going to have this one object. So how can I then do that? So I'm going to say list of objects, uh, list of objects. The branch is going to be equal to t dot branches, the whichever branch was in position I. And this is what I was meaning before when I was saying that when we query a branch from the list, what we obtain in return is an object of the type list of whatever. If I run this, hopefully it's not, everything is going to work. Yeah, I don't get a result yet, but things work correctly. And then what I would like to do also is I would like to take the path. So I'm going to call this path, whichever path is also at position I is going to be the path of the branch that is at the same position. Once I have these two, what I can do is to the clean data tree, the one that I defined before, I can add this branch with this particular path. So what we saw before is that we can add individual elements. So, so to clean, we can just say add individual elements. So for example, an object, whatever, we could add it to with a particular path. However, the, in this case, we don't want to add one element. We want to add a list of elements. So, so for that, there's a special, there's another one that we can use, which is called add range, which takes a list of data. In this case, that's going to be the full branch that I extracted before, and also accepts a path as the target where to add that data. And that's it. Since I have that already, I can now spit out this. And you can see that now what I'm getting is the branch with the right ID and this also with the right path and here also with the right path. So this is way cleaner and way nicer. All right. And as I said before, we're going to deal with error handling in the next few videos. So this is a way, way more elegant solution. And here in this channel, we're all about elegance. So if, we, if I ever do something not elegant, you're welcome to boo me and to send me like a few thumbs down. Okay. You got that. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Let's take a look at how to remove a branch with the same logic. Let's start by simply copying what we did before. So get branch. And now we're going to name this remove branch. And what are we going to do here is, and now I'm going to move this here to the beginning so that we can see the comparison a bit easier. Correct. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to remove all the code except for this one. And you can see that the problem here is that, let's see, for example, let's see if I try to say t dot branches dot remove at dot and the position, if I try to do that and to spit out t, I'm going to get an error. And I'm going to error an error. Let's see what it says. This operation is not supported in sorted list, nested types, blah, blah, blah. Requires modifying the original. I'm not sure, honestly, what this means at all. But what 
it practical form in practical terms it means is that from the internal list of branches that a data tree has you just simply cannot remove an element from it and my suspicion is that because data tree is an structure that has all these related elements so branches are related with paths and paths are related with the topology and all of that removing one would involve removing the other and maybe the data structure doesn't really do that so that's why this technique is not going to work so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a similar process to what we did before which is manually creating a new clean data tree and then what we're going to do is in this case what we're going to do is we're going to copy the whole data tree so we're going to copy all the branches and all the paths that were present in the previous data tree all except for the one that is at position i so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to create a for loop where i'm going to iterate over not i because i is already here so i'm going to use j as an iterator j is equal to zero j is less than the amount of branches that we have in the tree and that is here branch count j plus plus and then what i'm going to do is if the branch that i'm looking at that's j is different than the branch that i have been told to remove then i'm going to copy that branch so to the tree i'm going to shortcut this a little bit to the tree, I'm going to add the range, which is going to be the branch that I want to copy at that position. So t dot t dot branches at position j, and t dot at the and t dot paths at position j. So I'm going to add the branch at position j with the path at position j. Then remember, there are two matching ones. I'm going to add those to the clean data tree. So that's going to copy all the branches except for the one where j, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, coincides with the index number that I have been given as an input. And then as I type clean, boom, what we can see is that now there is no branch number 2 here. And if I say branch number 1, then I got branch number 1 here and I got 0 and 2 over here. Oh, you can't see it with my head. I need to chop down my head or something, right? And I can make this a little smaller and zoom in here. All right, how does this look? All right, beautiful. So we got remove branch and get branch. These two are actually super cool. And it's very nice to work with uh, selection, which is based on index. But remember, um, this can be easy to understand now oh yeah we have a branch we have a data tree that has zero one two it's kind of simple right but what if and so of course this one matches with one zero matches with zero but sometimes if we have a more complex data tree so for example let me graft this data tree here okay and then let me plug that in here and in here and in here if i do that then you can see that now working with indices it's a little less natural because honestly if this is complex enough i don't know if this branch is branch number 12 14 15 whatever it is maybe sometimes working with the index number is not so uh, convenient so what i would like to do is i would like to implement a version of these two components that instead of working with the index number as an input it works with the actual name of the full path all the curly brackets and the semicolons etc as an input so we're going to implement a version of that that takes the full path name as a string as input and we're going to see how to use paths as a way to get branches and remove branches it's going to involve a little bit of string manipulation but it's going to be quite cool let's see how to do that the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to copy myself here should I go back to a simple data tree or should I go back? I'm just gonna, I'm gonna have the two options here. So, okay, so let's just say that, um, yes, so uh, let's just work with the grafted data tree, why not? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get branch by 
by path, okay? And then here I'm going to change this to P and the type is going to be a string. What is a string? Here. And then I'm going to write here a tiny string that is going to be one and two, okay? This is a very typical, for example, so I'm going to reclaim that branch. We see it here, yes, all right. So, and then this would be the branch. So how am I going to do this? Well, it turns out that, first of all, I'm going to delete all of this stuff here. And uh, I'm going to delete all of this stuff. I'm going to move this all the way here because I will need to do some calculations before that. And, um, and the first thing that I, I mean, honestly, the, all, the whole difficulty of this exercise is going to be how to parse this string into something that is a grasshopper path that we can use to, re to get branches or to remove branches. Because what I can do is I can say here, there is actually a method called branch, which we can use to retrieve a particular branch based on the path name. And this will be different. So you can see that the path name can be a series of characters, uh, sorry, a series of integers. It can be a path object or it can be just one index, right? So turns out that um, what this exercise is going to boil down to is to be able to convert this string P into something that it's either a sequence of integers, so the numbers one and two in this case, right? Or a grasshopper path object representing those two numbers, one and two. And that is honestly just going to involve basically uh, string manipulation. So let's take a look at how that would work. In order to extract the numbers that form this path, what I basically need to do is take this string, one and two, and first of all, remove the curly brackets on the ends. Then take whatever is left and split it by the semicolons. And then once I have those, which will be strings, I need to convert them to integers. So um, how can I do that? So first of all, I'm going to say, I'm going to define a variable called clean string uh, str, which is going to be a copy of the input string. And then I'm going to operate on this string to be to start cleaning it and operating with it. The first thing that I would like to do is I would like to figure out how can I substitute or replace a bunch of uh, or eliminate a bunch of characters. So let me actually pull up the C sharp documentation for this. There's two ways we can go about that. So the string class in C sharp has a replace method that I can use to give it uh, a pair of chars or a pair of strings so that when however many instances of the first one it finds then it will replace them by the second one and this is a very common this is a very commonly used one because what we can do is we can say however many instances of the open curly bracket just replace them with nothing you know and we can do that recursively so for example what i can say is i take str and replace for example, the open curly, right, with nothing. And the result of this operation, use it to overwrite the original string. Okay, so we're changing the string in place. You know, we're not changing it in place, but we are overwriting the result and we are overwriting it into the original, the original variable. So let's see if this works. So you can see that I have found here now the result is that I have replaced the first one. So I could just keep doing this and say, can you replace this other curly bracket here? And then I would replace that. And also it would actually be really nice to um, add also replacement of white characters, white space characters, because if some user is not doing it in a clean way and has a character here, a white space, whatever, and, um, and another white space here, etc., right? So if it's not a clean string, then the result is going to be kind of messy. So another good thing to do probably would be to just add a white space character and remove all white space characters and leave it at nothing. Okay. So that's one way to go about it. And actually that's probably the 
easiest way, I think, because I was going to suggest also using Trim that replaces all the leading and all the trailing occurrences of particular characters. But since we don't really care where they are position-wise, I think I'm going to save ourselves the, the hassle of using Trim. So no Trim, we're going to stay with Replace. So you can see that uh, in this case, and maybe this might not be the most, the, the fastest way of doing it, but uh, I think at this point it doesn't really matter. So now I have a clean string, which basically has all the numbers of my path just separated with semicolons. So I already closed the documentation, but C sharp string class, I would like you to know that there's also this other method in the string class which is called split. And split, what it does is, what is method? Uh, split. The split method, if we look at the documentation, the documentation, the, 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 blah, 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 the documentation uh, tells us that given a character, all right, what split does is that it replay, it splits that string into individual segments using that character as the split character and it returns an array of those strings what that means is that for example for this sentence it's re it's returning each one of the words individually without the white spaces afterwards okay so for us it will be super useful because what we can do is we can say i'm going to declare an array of strings that is going to be digit strings and that's going to be equal to str.split by the character semicolon, all right? And if I split, and if I spit that out of the component, you can see that I have generated a list with all the numbers one after the other. The only problem is that these are actually not numbers because we, as we know here, the return type of split is a, an array of strings. So what we need to do now is we need to manually take each one of the strings and turn it into a, an integer. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define a new integer, which is called digits. And that's going to be a new array of integers with whatever same size as what I got before. So that's going to be length. Okay. All right. And then after that, I'm going to iterate over each one of these strings and then I'm going to convert them to an integer and store them here. So for int i equals zero, i is less than digit strings dot length, i plus plus. And then what I would like to do is at position i in the array of integers, I would like to store that original string converted to an integer. I can use for that from the integer32 class, which is the class that all integers inherit from, I can access a bunch of functionality. So for example, parse. So I can take parse and I can say, what is the string that I want to parse and try to convert into an integer? That's going to be digit strings at position i. And then this should be, should work. If I now replace this with digits, we are going to visually see no difference, but quality wise, this internally are not strings anymore. They are integers, which is great. And then we can use this array of integers to create a new grasshopper path. So grasshopper path is going to be equal to a new object of the type grasshopper path, which is going to take an array of integer 32s as an argument. So that's going to be digits. And if I speed out the path now, you can see that uh, the path object is this clean string converted into a path object that itself has been converted afterwards in this panel to a string so that we can see it on the screen. Okay, but it is a path object, which is great because now we can use that finally to say, can you give me, uh, can you give me the branch, which is t dot branch? Can you give me the branch that corresponds to that path that I generated, I just generated before? Can we do that? And then I'm going to 
spit that here, and this is going to be a branch. All right, and this is exactly the branch that we were looking for. Is that correct? It's uh, one over one, two, so that's going to be one, two, so nine, 14, 11, 17. Exactly, that is awesome. So that's, we got it there, okay? But hold on, what's going on here? Bef as before, this is not clean, it's not elegant, it's not outputting a tree with the branch just as we like it, okay? So well, how, how can we do this? Well, so let me create now a data tree, what is going to be called clean. And then to this data tree, to clean, I'm going to add a range, which is going to be, first of all, the branch is going to be the branch that we're going to find here. All right. Or if we want a bit more verbose, let's just fetch the branch. And then to clean, let's just add the range. Let's just add this branch that we just found. And let's add it at the path that we also generated ourselves. And then now here, what I would like to output is clean, which is, ooh, and actually, how about I call this tree better? All right, I'm going to call this tree up, and then tree, and there you go. And now the tree has the actual, the actual name on it, and I can say, well, how about you give me 0 0.3? All right, and then I get another branch, and what if you give me 6.8? This should fail somehow. Yes, we cannot, there's no null parameter, this cannot be found, etc. etc. So 1.2. All right. Beautiful. So this was great. Um, at least as an exercise, maybe not so much about trees, but at least some string manipulation. Now I'm going to show you a tiny trick. This is an this is a teaser to what we're going to see later. Because all of this code here, it's a lot of code to basically take a string named P and to, re and to convert it to a grasshopper path. This feels like something that we could wrap inside of a function. However, we haven't seen how to do that yet in grasshopper components, but I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Functions are actually defined here in this area called custom additional code, and I will explain in further videos down the road, why this is the case. But what we're going to do is I'm going to create a function here that is going to say path from string. And then this is going to take as an input, it's going to take a, like, like, a, like a string path, for example. And then it's going to return an object of the type grasshopper path. Now I'm going to copy all of this here, all right? I'm going to copy it there. I'm going to replace this original thing. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to do the, the modifications, etc. I'm going to calculate the path. And then I'm going to return that path. And here, what I can do now, and this is a bit more elegant and clean, I can declare a variable called grasshopper path, which is going to be the result of this operation. So taking the string p and turning it into a grasshopper path. And if I run this, nothing happens, which means everything went great. And it means that we were able to take all this fuzzy code and wrap it into a nice function that we can now reuse in other components, such as, for example, on the next component, the last one, uh, which is going to be removing a branch from a data tree. Let's get started then. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to basically just, I'm going to copy paste this one. I'm going to say, I'm going to copy paste one, and I'm going to remove branch by path. OK. And then here, this code I'm going to reuse. This I'm also going to maintain here, but I'm going to change this a little bit. OK. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, first, I'm going to say, take T and then remove from this. And it's actually going to be much easier. Remove from this tree, remove a path 
that is under this address. The address being the path that we've generated before from this input. And then just output that same data tree that we have removed the path from. And then as we do that, ta-da, that was way easier, right? Now that we had the, the boilerplate. Because you see, we have the same tree structure, etc., etc. But when it comes to the branch 1.2, it's not there anymore. Okay, so it was, aside from this code that we could reuse, it was just as simple as defining the path and from the tree using the remove path function to remove that particular path. Okay, beautiful. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Whoa, my head is spinning. Ooh, that's a lot of data that we've seen today, right? Well, we're almost done. But not quite, because the last exercise that I would like to do is I would like to now go back to this one, one, and uh, where is it? Uh, b -b 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 divide surface, this one here. Remember this component here under the nerves components? Remember when we did subdivision of a surface in UV points, correct? Remember how we did that and we found the points over the um, over the surface but remember how the output was not subdivided into um, was not subdivided into trees and um, the original component that we were copying from the surface subdivision this one actually did return if you remember it did return an output that was in the form of a data tree so what i would like to do now is i would like to spend a little bit of time going back to this code and rewriting it so that we can now output data trees, proper data trees from this component. Shall we do this? This is going to be the last component that we're doing before we move on, okay? Shall we do this? I think that the way I'm going to do this for the time being is that I'm going to keep the original flat version of this component. I'm going to move everything over here. I'm going to re keep the original flat version of this component and I'm going to copy everything and paste and make like a second version of this. So I'm going to rename this to, this is going to be flat. So, uh, all right, let's call it list, all right? I'm going, this is going to be list and then I'm going to copy everything and create a version that outputs a tree, okay? All right, beautiful. So, uh, all right, so now let's go in and let's see what can we do here. What we would like to do is, well, first of all, I'm going to remove this all the way from here. And then what I'm going to do is before creating this lists, instead of creating this list, what I'm going to turn this into is that I'm going to turn each one of these into a data tree, okay? So data tree, data tree so we're going to only output data trees of information all right and if i'm not correct this should still work okay it's just that now everything goes back to the default zero because we can add things without specifying paths that's absolutely fine the only thing that i need to do is now i would like to improve this so that all these elements the points the normals the uv points etc they get added to a particular branch and what I need to do first is that I need to define which branch those are going to be added to. So remember, uh, so that I can do here. So for example, I can say grasshopper path is going to be equal to a new grasshopper path. And then what I'm going to do is for the two levels, the first level and the second level, what I would like to do is that I'm going to use just, um, I'm going to use where in the I position we are because I'm going to sort them by row. So the path that I'm going to use is going to be I, okay? And then what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to say path, I need to add this element to this path, I need to add this element to this path, this element to this path, and this element to this path. And then if I do this, ta-da! What I can see now is that my output is now divided into branches, just like it would if it had been done with the original component, right? And just for the sake of cleanness, remember that because this is the same path for all the elements in the same row, we can just do it 
once and not have to do it over and over again. Okay, so that was actually quite easy, right? So beautiful. And then all the elements are now into three structures and uh, that match in their structures. Okay, beautiful. All right. So I think that's it. So, so I think we're ready to go with this. So, yep. Yeah, so that's it. So beautiful. So that was data components. Is there anything else I want to say? No. So that was data components. I hope this was helpful. I don't know how long this video took, end of the day, but I hope this was helpful, helped you understand how to create and how manipulate data trees. And um, I think with this, this is mostly what I wanted to say about data trees. So we're ready to move on, on the playlist, on this course on advanced development in Grasshopper to uh, other advanced topics uh, in C Sharp scripting. Okay. And in the meantime, uh, thank you very much for being here. If you like this video, if you found it useful, maybe consider liking, subscribing to the channel, spreading the word, giving us a kudos, a hand, heads up on Instagram, whatever you fancy. We're open to all kinds of uh, gratitude if you feel called to do. Okay. Thank you very much and see you on the next video.